if there's any Star Wars character you would associate with personal hygiene, I think it would definitely be Jabba the Hutt. And that's why Omni Cosmetics in 1983 came out with this Star Wars bubble bath, Jabba the Hutt version. Uh, you know, it just makes sense. This particular one I got recently, and it is actually full. It's still got the bubble bath inside, never been opened. This is how they would have been sold with this um, clear plastic over the top so that they wouldn't uh, come open and leak, you know, in the store or whatever. So this is, you know, unopened, never been used or anything like that, which I think is kind of cool in a way. Um, and it got me thinking when I picked this up that I actually have quite a few kind of soap or bath related <laughs> items, uh, you know, in my Java collection. So I thought I would take the opportunity to show you them today. Uh, I would like to look at this one in detail, actually. First, we'll look at the uh, little uh, tag here. Now, if we can get a little closer look at it. It says, Jabba the Hutt, the powerful intergalactic gangster who lives in a fortress-like palace on Tatooine. He controls all the crime and cr criminals in the galaxy. That's why he's so expert at filling up your tub with a galaxy of bubbles and a nice fresh scent. Makes perfect sense to me. Bathe with Jabba the Hutt. You'll feel all-powerful yourself. Collect all the Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi characters. They make keeping clean more fun. Indeed, they do. Now, this particular one, as I said, is full. It's even got um, the price tag here, which appears to be from Caldor. Four ninety-three, which is a little expensive, actually, if you think about it. That would have been over ten bucks for this, but eh. I suppose it's about right. Uh, I really like this product. I always have had, I've had various, you know, editions or versions of this over the years. Uh, I had uh, one of the sort of companion products to this, which is the Jabba the Hutt uh, shampoo. So that is this one right here, as you can see. This one uh, is empty. I think I got it actually... Um, originally with the shampoo inside, but it started leaking or something like that. So, you, in fact, you can see here, this is kind of discolored, and I think that's where the shampoo got onto the label. So I, I drained it, but it allows you to see just how good and cute this sculpt is. I just really like this sculpt here. Looks almost like some kind of a, an idol or something like that, something that... Uh, would be made out of metal. In fact, we'll come back to that in just a minute. But uh, I wanted to show you the, the tags here. As, as I said, these are, you know, this is essentially the same product, except that this one has shampoo in it rather than uh, bubble bath. And in fact, they both have a Caldor price tag for $4.93 on them, even though I got these years apart. I don't know if there was a particular, you know, focus on these at Caldor stores or what the deal was. Uh, but if we look at this tag, you can see it's mostly the same text as the one I just read you, except here it says now, uh, let's see, that's why he's so expert at doing away with all the dirt and grime in your hair. He's smooth, but he means business. Shampoo with Jabba the Hutt. You'll feel all powerful yourself. So they've kind of uh, altered the text just a little bit in there to make it appropriate for shampoo as opposed to bubble bath, which I thought was very cool. Um, now, of course, uh, Omni Cosmetics, they did come out with various characters in this line. I don't have them all, but I do have a few, just to give you an idea. We have here uh, Wicket the Ewok. I don't know, uh, this one is the Bubble Bath, but they, you know, would have used the same container for the uh, shampoo. So you can see if we take off the lid. In fact, I should do that for uh, Jabba as well. We take off the lid, and you can see that there is a little cap, screw-on cap in there. There's the inside of that. Similar deal over here. And then I also have uh, Yoda and uh, Luke Skywalker in his X-Wing uniform there. These are just sort of blow-molded plastic uh, bottles, but I find them extremely charming. And uh, in fact, going back to what I just said a minute ago, I uh, actually took one of these and painted it maybe 12 years ago at this point. So here, we'll move this over to the side, and you can see 
this is the one that I painted because I just felt like it really looked like some kind of a an idol or a statue. And so I used a, uh, a faux bronze look to make it look like metal with a little bit of uh, sort of, you know, patina on it. There you can see the, I painted it all black to start with, so you can, you can see the difference there. But uh, yeah, it actually turned out really well. The only thing, the only thing I really did was to, to sand it down a little bit so that the paint would have a better chance of sticking to it. But uh, I think it looks really cool. I also have, by the way, one other item, kind of a curiosity related to the Omni Cosmetics Java, and that is this cap here that I got at an online uh, antique store year, several years ago. It was sort of just listed. I don't remember how they listed it, but it was just like I stumbled upon it somehow just by accident doing some sort of uh, Google search. And, the, you know, it's just appears to be the same as this uh, standard green cap, except that it's in white plastic. And everything I've been able to determine indicates that this is probably some kind of a pre-production item because it actually came from not very far away from the Omni Cosmetics um, headquarters. And uh, just, you know, it appears it's definitely not some kind of a, uh, you know, bootleg or something. I don't know why anyone would want to do that anyway, making a copy of this lid. But uh, the person who was selling it, I got in contact with them. They said that they had just sort of found a, a box of uh, green and white ones uh, several years ago, and they just decided to put them up on line for sale, and so I got one. It wasn't expensive, but yeah, it fits right there on the uh, bottle, as you might expect. So, we've got uh, the bubble bath and the shampoo, but of course, if you want to stay clean, you're going to need some soap as well. And thankfully, I have you covered there as well. First up, we have this Gamorian Guard Soap, which is also from Omni Cosmetics in 1983. They had, in addition to the bubble bath and shampoo, a line of Star Wars-designed soaps in various characters. And, uh, of course, you know, the character that you most likely associate with keeping clean, other than Jabba himself, is the Gamorian Guard. So that was a natural choice, obviously. Uh, we have... It's a fairly you know, hefty bar of soap, four ounces. And uh, if we look at the back, we can see it has a similar description to what we saw uh, on the tags for the bubble bath and shampoo. This one has a um, tag here, or a price tag from Montgomery Ward, which for some reason has been blocked out. I don't know if this was <laughs> sold uh, elsewhere later on or something. It says here, Gamorian Guard, Jabba the Hutt's elite corps of personal protectors who also guards the prisoners in his palace. Though they walk upright like humans, they're really powerful monsters. That's why they're so great at helping you wipe out dirt and grime. Lather up with a Gamorrean guard. You'll feel plenty powerful yourself. Indeed. So let's go ahead and open this box, take a look at the uh, soap itself. I'm going to do it like this so I don't rip the box at all. And here we go. This is the uh, Gamorrean Guard Bar of Soap. Really quite a nice um, sculpt here. I, I, I like this a lot. And if we look on the back, it's got the Star Wars logo and everything. 1983. This is a really cool item, I think. And not really very expensive, I don't think. I haven't checked it on eBay recently. But, uh, you know, this kind of thing is really up my alley. Our next item is perhaps more tangentially related to Jabba, but it does have Jabba's palace here on Tatooine, shown on the package. And this is some Star Wars foam bath and soaps from Addis in the UK. This was released in 1985, so a little bit later than the ones I was just showing you. It says, help clean up the Empire. Interesting. If we look on the back here, you can see it's got some information about the droids as well as the uh, copyright information there, 1985 Addis Limited. And we see, uh, just if we look, want to look at the descriptions here, C-3PO, a tall droid with a golden metallic service. C-3PO translates millions of galactic languages, including electronic tongues spoken by many droids. As well as looking like a human, he often behaves rather like a human. 
True enough. R2-D2, a barrel-shaped droid who functions as an all-purpose repair robot. R2-D2 talks through beeps, whistles, and toots, which C-3PO interprets for their human companions. And it says, contents foam bath, soaps with long-lasting character labels. So that's interesting. You can see... I don't know if I've ever actually even opened this up, but it is... It's not sealed. The tape, I think, is just perished over time. So we can go ahead and open this up, take a look at what the actual soap looks like. Um, ooh, this, uh, this tray inside seems rather brittle, but yeah, here is the actual soap, and then we've got the foam bath. Let's see if we can get the soap out of there, yep. We have R2-D2, and it's got that label. I really do question how long a label like this would last on soap, but supposedly it's long-lasting. Nothing really on the bottom there, and... I assume it's oops, it's all falling out on us now. I assume it's the same deal with uh, C-3PO there. A little bit broken on the back, even though <laughs> there's no indication that this uh, you know has been damaged and there's no little crumbles of soap or anything. So I think this is like this from the pack or from the factory. Let's take a look at that foaming bath, shall we? C-3PO foam bath. Formulated to soak away dirt while you relax in thousands of fragrant soothing bubbles. Helps clean the bath, too. May the force be with you. Nice. You can see a very clean line here, or clear line, where the uh, label or whatever... I guess this is actually this is actually printed on the plastic, but it's it's been faded or uh, darkened by the sun, I guess I should say, because the back, I imagine, is what it originally looked like, and it's kind of gotten yellowed over here. Anyway, pretty cool. By the way, I discovered that if you just unscrew this, there's nothing inside to, uh, you know, stop up the uh, the liquid there. There's actually still liquid in there. Let me smell it. You know what? That actually smells really nice. <laughs> I thought it maybe would be kind of gross. When I smelled uh, the Jabba the Hutt um, bubble bath and shampoo, it, it was a little medicinal smelling, I thought, but I wasn't sure if that was the way it originally smelled or just, you know something had happened over time, but, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's got a faint kind of, uh, perfumed smell to it. It's actually pretty nice. What we have here is not just a pink vintage Jabba. No, no, no. This is a bar of soap in the shape of the vintage Jabba. I got this from an Etsy seller years ago, maybe eight or 10 years ago. They were selling custom soaps in various shapes. And when I saw that they were offering this, I said, sign me up for three. Uh, in fact, you could choose the colors and scents that you wanted. So for this one, I chose obviously pink and cherry scent. Although for all of these that I'm going to show you, basically the scents have totally dissipated over the years. But uh, anyway, cherry. I also got a green one with jasmine scent. There you can see that a little closer. I like the way he's put the uh, <laughs> little black pupils in there, especially this one. He looks a little bit disturbed. Uh, and I also got a white one with coconut scent. Now these all have slightly, I guess, changed over the years as they've just been sitting on the shelf in my collection. They, The tails have kind of curled up for some reason, and you can see his hand here has gotten a little curled up weirdly. I don't know, I feel like these have shrunk as well over time so that uh, they're not as big as they used to be relative to the uh, to the vintage Jabba. In fact, maybe I should bring out a vintage Jabba. I always have one in uh, reach here. You can see that they're, they're significantly uh, smaller. This is actually the uh, Mexican Lily Letty Jabba, but it's the same size as the regular one. Uh, I'm not really sure what accounts for that. I, f I feel like when I got these originally, they were a lot closer in size, but I could be just misremembering. Anyway, uh, when I got these, a couple of them arrived actually broken. The tails had broken off, and they were, I mean, these were not super expensive, but they were a little expensive, and the whole point of them is to look like the vintage Jabba. So I, uh, you know, asked if I could get a replacement for those, and I did. In fact, that's what the ones you see here are the replacements. Uh, but that sort of serendipitously allowed me to use a couple of those as actual soap. So I had, uh, for example, this 
the green version in my kid's bathroom for quite some time. I think years, maybe uh, they didn't use it like every time they wash their hands, but, uh, they did use it and it took a long time to finally get worn away to nothing. Uh, I just find these to be, uh, you know, quite endearing somehow. Of course, I love the vintage Java, but the idea that these are actually soap is what really sells it for me. You can see on the bottom, there's just sort of nothing there. I assume what they did was to make a mold uh, and then, you know, just pour in some some soap like that. And uh, that was it. <laughs> not, a lot, not a lot to it, really. After you've gotten out of the bath, you still need to dry off, and I've got you covered there as well with this Jabba the Hutt bath towel, or maybe this is more of a beach towel. I don't know. It's kind of large. This one, uh, well, I say it's a Jabba one. It has Jabba featured very prominently here in the center, and it also has on the top here the uh, Max Rebo band. There we are. And then in the center, if I can <laughs> show it to you, we've got uh, Wicket and R2-D2. There we go. Look at that glorious Jabba on his throne there. That is very impressive. In addition to this one, which is perhaps more Jabba-centric than most, I also have another Return of the Jedi towel here. This one, uh, like the other one, is made by the Bib Company. This was uh, from 1983. And this one uh, is a little bit less, as I say, a little bit less Jabba-centric because it has the uh, Ewok village on the top. It's got our heroes in the center. And then more toward the bottom, we have a different but similar Jabba illustration with a Gamorrean guard to the side and, uh, you know, Darth Vader and so forth. We also have his sail barge there at the bottom with a skiff. Very cool stuff. Uh, I really, I've always loved this kind of you know, household goods from uh, the 80s really reminds me of being a kid for some reason. In addition to this, we have a couple more modern items. This one is going to be a little bit hard to show off, but you can see it says Jabba the Hut Heart. <laughs> Did I design this? Seems almost like I might have. Uh, what this is is a, uh, a hooded towel for kids, you know, getting out of the bath or whatever. And if we turn it around, you can see, first of all, that it's got kind of a tail dangling down, just like Java. And on the top, it's got Java's face. So they would come up, you know, use this, this hood to pull up over their head and dry off their hair and make him look like Java at the same time, which is pretty awesome. I got this uh, in Japan, actually, and I think I've showed it off some time ago in a different uh, sort of pickups video, but definitely thought it was appropriate to include in today's video. And finally, last but not least, I have one more item to show you. This is actually a custom beach towel with my sort of channel mascot on it. That's the vintage Jabba holding the Leia and Jabba toys. Uh, this is quite large. It's difficult to show on camera, but I'll give you a shot here of the whole thing spread out. You can see it's basically a um, a vector graphic of this uh, the photo that I use as my channel artwork. And uh, yeah, it's pretty nice, I would say. I got this probably a couple of years ago. I thought about making them available for purchase, but... Uh, I haven't really decided if that was something I'd want to do. This is not, uh, you know, it's it's the kind of produced on demand kind of thing. It's not like I would be selling them personally. In addition to the towel, I also made designs for a tote bag and a throw pillow and a kind of fuzzy blanket. And I have all of these myself. They all are actually pretty nice. I use them uh, fairly often. So, you know, if you're interested in this kind of thing, I suppose I could think about making them available to uh, other people. Just let me know in the comments uh, if you are interested. That's about it for today. I hope you are all keeping clean, and I'll see you all very soon. This video was brought to you with the help of my Patreon supporters, including these Palace VIPs, Angelica Brady and Jesper Murtu, 
If you'd like to help support the channel too, go to the link in the video description.